Hey guys, welcome to the Play for Life Comics Final Order Cutoff Show for 92422. Um, what this is is uh, final orders due, uh, our last chance to adjust orders for many books uh, that are about three to five weeks out. We do ask that you get your orders in by uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, we typically put this up on Tuesday, ask you to get finished by Saturday. That way we can get the orders in. Um, there are dozens of books that come up for adjustment every week for FOC. Those can be found at previewsworld.com or if it's a DC book, lunardistribution.com. We only focus on a very small handful of books out each week. Uh, we try to cover, um, number ones, uh, hot covers and possible first appearances and things that we learn about from key collector and a couple other sources. So, excuse me, we'll get started. Um, little plug. We are a full service comic shop here in downtown Wake Forest, North Carolina. We're open seven days a week. We do 20% off new releases every week and all single issues off the FOC show are available at 20% off. Um, and that is to out of towners as well. So, uh, if you're an out-of-towner want to reach out about our shipping rates and things like that, please do. Um, we do three live sales shows a week on Facebook and YouTube, uh, Tuesday, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. I play for Life Comics on Facebook and YouTube. And Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for two hours. So definitely check those out. We can also combine shipping with that and this stuff. So it's definitely a way to get you the books you want if you uh, – live in an area without a local comic shop or in, uh, one you, you know, can't depend on or it's hard for you to get out, we, we can try to help you with that. So um, down at the bottom, we do have an attached Google Docs sheet that's got all, it's got pictures and check boxes for everything we cover on the show. And it's got a big blank spot at the bottom. That's for uh, if you want 10 copies of a great looking cover, we can do it. Or if you want something, if you go to previewsworld.com and you see that the fifth issue of something you're reading is coming out, we can order that for you too. Um, it's not just the books we're showing. Uh, it's any books that are up for adjustment. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. This one is a little bit shorter than normal this week, so... Damn Them All from Image Comics. This is uh, pretty interesting. This is a Charlie Adlard cover if you're familiar with uh, Walking Dead art. Um, so what this is is uh, this girl, uh, her uncle, who is a famous ma magician <laughs> and occult detective, has passed away. And in doing so, um, a lot of demons have been released uh, from something he had going on the 72 devils of the Ars Goetha are mysteriously freed from their infernal realm. And so she's got to uh, run around and quell that and uh, using holy water conjuration and just, or just her trusty rusty claw hammer. So there you go. Probably good and bloody um, in walking dead style there. You got an a cover by Charlie Adlard. B covered by Donnie, Danny, not sure. Um, nice six-issue miniseries. I know I say that every show. I like a good short and sweet uh, indie series, you know, that doesn't drag on too long. And I don't think you need 100 issues to tell a great story sometimes. So um, this is the foil of the first one and the foil of the second. And I believe these probably a couple dollars yeah. more. Um, and an in hook Lee that the... Uh, image is not yet available so there you go um and there's that website previewsworld.com where you can see all the other comic books available for uh fsc adjustment other than dc that you got to look on lunar, lunar distribution, distribution. yep eve children of the moon this is a boom series there was a eve uh probably about two years ago i think it was early in the pandemic that one came out um, and it was interesting. She goes around with this, what looks like a raggedy teddy bear, but in real life, it's a pretty vicious killer robot. And um, her, her sister, and Wexler, which I believe is the name of the bear, are kind of out trying to save the world for a second time, um, running around. This is Victor LaVale, 
Uh, he's famous for he did this kind of book called Destroyer. He also did Sabretooth for a while. Um, really good writer. And it was a real cool series. It was uh, post-apocalyptic after a, a virus uh, came about. She had been sealed in like a cryogenic type thing and is having to kind of uh, fight her way through a new world. So Eve, Children of the Moon, number one of five. You got a, oh, there's a Lindsay cover that's pretty cool. On to Star Wars High Republic. Uh, this is, I believe, the second series uh, out from Dark Horse. Um, so now you got Dark Horse and Marvel carrying Star Wars titles. A uh, little history here. Marvel had Star Wars, and they really only had a couple of titles from about 77 up to early 90s or late 80s, early 90s. And then Dark Horse took over and put out over 100 Star Wars series over the years. Many, many series. Many, many of them were mini series. Um, say that one 10 times fast. Um, but now, uh, Marvel's had Star Wars back since 2016, I believe, and um, have put out some great stuff. Uh, now they're starting to uh, have Dark Horse do some more stuff. This is Star Wars High Republic Adventures, the second title of that name. The first one through Dark Horse that I know of. This is be a one shot uh, coming out 10 19 22. So there we go. This is not the final art, but uh, gives you a point of reference there and this one basically um some new jedis we're not familiar with go to a mysterious planet and there's an artifact wreaking havoc and they're doing what they can to save the population of that planet. moon knight annual number one uh werewolf by moon knight um in the dark hold there there's a prophecy in the dark hold um of how a god might die and this is like a battle between uh, uh, Werewolf by Night and Moon Knight. And they're trying to figure out uh, how to fulfill or not for fulfill this prophecy. There's a great Rod Reyes A cover there. Kind of, uh, It's kind of got that Sinkowitz look mm -hmm. almost a little bit. Uh, Nick Klein, this is one I like. Kind of looks like it's glowing. Uh, B cover. On to She-Hulk number seven. Uh, I'm a fan of Jen Bartell, but I got to say this is one of the better covers I've seen in a while. In number eight, it is said that there will be a new villain. Um, do you remember the name of the villain? Yeah, it didn't have a name yet. Okay. So the speculation is that here in number seven, uh, this will be the cameo or first appearance of that villain. So there you go. Either way, you get a great cover out of it. Um, there's the Miracle Man, also Jim Bartell cover for the B cover. Now, this is our one non-single issue book of the week. Um, these we cannot offer the 20% off. This is a great reminder to let me let you know all these that we've been showing or will be showing are 20% off to us. This is the Spider-Man vs. Venom hardcover omnibus, um, $125. Uh and they got a lot of great stuff. It's some of his earliest stuff. All the introduction, the ASM 300 on. Yeah, 258, uh, 315, 317 that had that classic. Yeah, the battle. Carnage stuff is in there. 332 to 333, 346 to 347, 361 to 363, which is your Carnage. 374, a bunch of web of stuff. Um, I mean, a ton of stuff. I want to say there's 30 something issues here. If you just want to collect it all and have it in one place to, to read, this is. Yeah. The way to do it. Because if you were to buy up all them issues at this point, it would cost you a kidney. So <laughs> there you go. Um, and it was some good reading, too. I mean, it's some classic Marvel stuff. Uh, Strange Academy kind of coming off the heels of that uh, the last Strange Academy, which was a big, uh, big to do. And a couple of those characters that were introduced in that series have spun off into other teams and stuff. If you didn't read it, it was really cool. Um, I had a lot of fun reading that series, and then uh, this is toward the end of their freshman year. Uh, finals is the name of the thing, and I'll just read the solicitation. From day one, people have been wondering who is the savior of Strange Academy, who can bring it all down. The future of Marvel magic is going to be decided here, and it will take far more than the Sorcerer Supreme and his school if magic has a chance. So there you go. You get your Humberto Ramos uh, A cover who 
I'm sure he's doing the interior. He did the interior on the first series, I believe. Because I think it was Scotty Young writing Humberto Ramos. I think Scotty Young was writing this one, too. Yeah. Um, I like him better as a writer than a, a, an artist. That's just me. Don't don't send the hate mail. Um, Nettie's uh, games variant um, there. Uh, I always like these window shade variants. They do a couple different takes. This one's fun. This is most of the class kind of looking like somebody's driving up the up the path or something. And that's out 10, 26, 22. Now, see, if you guys know we're Southern and you hear Brandon talk like that, most people will be talking about driving up the driveway and all that <laughs> stuff in the urban areas, but we're in the country here, so we still drive up the dirt path. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I grew up, so. Let's see. We got a Dustin Weaver trading card variant on that one. Nightfall. So this one's cool. This was like a double feature uh, horror anthology. They've been doing more of this kind of stuff, which is throwing back to like, if you look at a lot of books in the 60s, 70s, a lot of the, especially the horror stuff and heck, a lot of the early superhero stuff <coughs> were anthology books. Yeah, you know, you got to remember all this is leading up. It's all coming out the week Halloween. or two weeks before Halloween. Yep. So this, yeah, ten twenty six. So this is right before Halloween. Um, so if you just want a good horror story to read, this has two of them in it. Um, one is uh, the Cemeterians, and it's after human bones begin growing inside inanimate objects all across the globe. A renegade scientist and brilliant theologian delve into cemeteries where the bones originated, discovering an otherworldly force tired of being buried in darkness. The other story in this one is called Denizen, a family's cross-country road trip. It goes off the map and into the under unforgiving wilds of Joshua Tree National Park. When mom and wife-to-be Helen succumbs to a malevolent force tucked inside an abandoned camper trailer. Um, so it sounds like some good old drive-in B-movie horror type stuff. Um, matter of so, fact, one of the covers is a drive-in theater. Well, and the trade dress kind of has that feel mm -hmm. to it, you know. Uh, so it's a vault. Vault Comics has been doing some great stuff. Um, and I imagine these are kind of two one-and-done short stories is my guess. Um, there's a Chris she uh, Sheehan Deluxe Edition. Uh, so this one's two dollars more. Not sure what the difference is. Maybe it's a cardstock cover, not a hundred percent. There's your drive-in cover. I kind of like that one with the skeleton coming out. On to Postmasters. Now both of us uh, kind of got the vibe from reading the description. If you ever watched, uh, there's a Kevin Costner movie, probably about twenty years ago now, um, where it's kind of a post-apocalyptic situation. One of the few things people can depend on is the mail. Um, and this, uh, a mysterious letter shows up, I believe they said in the Western States Distribution Center. Um, and this one post postman, postman number 32, has to go through uh, all kinds of stuff. Rugged terrain, highway robbers, and all this stuff to get his, uh, you know, Get his letter where it belongs, come rain or shine, kind of thing. And there's still the old idea of the rain, the sleet, nor dead of night. Yep. And uh, so there we go, the postmasters. Um, little throwback kind of thing. Um, Catwoman 48, of course, a great Jeff to call cover here. Uh, and of course, this is the meeting of her two, the guy she's lovers with now and Batman. Oh, Those okay. Two cross paths, and of course, the guy she's with now is a thief and a murderer. So, of course, and of course, you know how's Batman going to react to this? And and she kind of snubbed him at the wedding uh, yeah. two or three years ago. So, there we go. Great says a Micah cardstock uh, B cover for a dollar more. I like the kind of oversized uh, signature. signature there, uh, and that's just a cool cover. A little different than what she's mm -hmm. been doing, but I, I like it. Dark Crisis, Young Justice number one. Now, we, we discussed how to pronounce this. It was Mickey was the first Mickey. name. So this is the first appearance of, I'm going to say this all slow and funny, Mickey Mixapitalik. So Mr. Mixapitalik, uh, we're assuming the son, son yeah, um, is coming and uh, uh, harassing the Young Justice team. And I assume that's him there. 
Um, and if you've ever read any of the old mix of Pitalik stories, they were they were usually kind of fun. They mm. were they were definitely weird. Um, got an Ortega cardstock cover, cool looking Robin cover there. Uh, on to DC versus Vampires All Out War number four with an Alan Qua cover. Great. Uh, they're doing a lot with uh, Mary Marvel right now, um, which I think is an underrated character. It's just really cool. I mean, goes way back to the Golden Age. So there you go. Plenty of, plenty of uh, kind of background to build off of. So uh, you got your Christian Ward cardstock cover, almost kind of a uh, negative space kind of thing. On to GCPD. I love. Uh, police procedurals, crime types, comics, stuff like that. Uh, this is a um, relatively early in her tenure as commissioner, Renee Montoya, uh, leading the GCPD six-issue story. Um, if you like the older GCPD stuff from some time back, uh, got a bit high hopes for this one. Um, so it should be good. They're struggling with dealing with being a police officers in uh, a city like Gotham, uh, which can't be easy. So you got an A cover, Murakami, uh, Eddie Barrow. Sorry, this is a different book. Titan United Blood Pack number two. Uh, you got an Eddie Barrow's A cover and uh, the Derek Chu B cover here, great looking Starfire cover. Got a cool juxtaposition with the colors, with the orange and the green there. Um, this was probably my might be my favorite cover out of all of them today. Uh, Titan United Blood Pack number two. This is the Raza variant with uh, Hawkeye and Black Adam. Um, of course, that movies they're kind of amping up. They'll probably do a few cool covers of that stuff coming up. And Raza just does great work. Uh, this is one of the first things I've seen of them in a while. It's not kind of monochromatic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like all red or all green. I kind of like this one. Um, well, there we go, guys. That wraps it up for us for the week. Uh, get those orders in by Saturday. Um, if you see anything else on previewsworld.com and lunardistribution.com, uh, just put it in the, uh, the blank down there at the bottom. Again, if you're out of towners, do reach out on shipping. And things like that. And we appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great safe week out there. And we will see you next time. Take it easy, guys.